Okay, so that happens, mm -hmm. and you know, I feel like your your TMZ career continued to grow. Right. You had the uh, you know Van Lathan's uh, Red Pill uh -huh. podcast. Uh -huh. You know, so you were given like your own kind of spinoff show. I have been doing that before the Kanye thing. Okay, before. Okay, but yeah, then, yeah. but the show kept going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you had more, helped more. Every that helped everything. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You right. had more visibility. You had bigger guests on the show. Everything's going well. Then October two thousand nineteen happens. <laughs> now the details of this are relatively sketchy. Okay, because the incident that we're talking about was not actually broadcast. No, it wasn't. There's video of it, though. Okay. Yeah. But there's screenshots. There's screenshots. Happened. Yeah. And the screenshots that I saw was your hands around one of your coworkers' necks. Okay. Is that is that accurate? No. It's well, not? Nah. Okay. So, apparently something happened with Michael Babcock, Mike one, one of your coworkers, white guy who's relatively on the conservative side of things, right? Right. Right wing. So- Tell me what happened leading up to the incident. So I, so like that morning, there was a story and it was about Ellen DeGeneres and um, hanging out with like George W. Bush. Right. And I got all pissed off about it because, you know, George W. Bush did a fantastic career makeover. He did a fantastic career makeover uh, in sort of rebranding himself as not a war criminal and not the guy who <laughs> left my cousins and them drowning in uh, flood waters with fucking snakes and alligators in them. And he was just like a, a president that just wasn't as bad as Trump and he liked to paint. And he did a fantastic rebrand and everybody was in on it. Like everybody was like- uh, Michelle Obama. Michelle Obama having fun with him and all yeah. of that. And those people are entitled to that. But for me being from down there, and having seen the situation, it's just more difficult for me. So Ellen DeGeneres palling around with, with George W. Bush, she's entitled to do that. She doesn't have to. She's from New Orleans too. Hmm. Like she doesn't, like she doesn't, she doesn't have to. But for me, it's like, fuck George W. Bush. Not, I don't hope anything bad happens to him, but like I'm off it forever, right? It's not my thing. Um, so I went, I get super into that earlier in the show. Like TMZ Live happens in the middle of the day, TMZ the television show. It's like first thing in the morning, like 6.45, like when we first come in. And then after that, I say, I don't want to talk about this on TMZ Live. I said, it's too personal. It's too upsetting. I don't want to talk about this on TMZ Live. I don't. And they kept asking me. It's like, I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. They kept asking me. Anyway, I can't remember exactly what happened during the segment. But during the segment, uh, Mike kept shouting over me, talking over me. Um, and because he was in the host chair that day, Harvey wasn't there. I haven't seen Harvey since before that day. Harvey wasn't there. Mike was hosting with Charles. Now, to understand this entire situation, I have to understand the relationship between me and Mike. Mike was by far my closest friend at TMZ. Hmm. Okay. Not even me and Mike still talk all the time. Like Mike will send me random stuff, uh, just random stuff about reminiscing and. All of that, me and Mike were thick as thieves. Anybody would say it was Van and Mike Babcock. We worked in the same place. We were all on the sports team. Me, Mike, uh, Lucas, all of us, we were tight, a tight group, such a tight group that it became like an HR thing. Like y'all got a little boys club over in sports, they would tell us. Um, so when... I say that to say that what happened in the office could have only happened between me and Mike because of the familiarity that existed with us, right? So Mike, after the thing is over, I felt like he was talking to me in a fucked up way, right? In front of everyone. So I'm pissed, no doubt. I go over there and I put my hands, I come up from behind him because he's in the host seat and I put my hands on his shoulders. Like my hands weren't like this. They were like this. And I'm just actually putting my hands on the shoulders so I can lean over and talk to him. If you watch the video, you'll see it. I say something. I say, go ahead, give it to me. This is the picture right here. So that right there, that's the that that freeze frame right there is because he's turned. Uh -huh. So my hands were like this, right? And then he turned and I have my hand right that. So but, but show me that picture again and, and, and show it. 
Show it to the show it to the audience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll put up the picture. Yeah, put up the picture. If I want, if I wanted to, if I want, I'm whispering in his ear. I'm I'm literally whispering in his ear. If I wanted to, if I wanted to come up behind him and choke him, I could have come up behind him and put him in a sleeper hole. I could have come up behind him and put my hands around his throat. There's no way I would ever hurt Mike. There's no way. No one in that office, no one in that office believes that I was a physical threat to anybody in the office. Like just nobody believes that. It's it's like, it's it's kind of a thing. Um, but yeah, so that happens. I whisper in his ear, yo, dog, seriously, that was too much. That was fucked up. You know you can't talk to me like that. And if, if you watch the whole video, he says something, he turns around, he, he turns around like this, and then he actually moves my hand and then I move it. Like literally when he, when he, when he, he moves my hand and I didn't, when he moves my hand, I move it. Like I move, I move my hand. I like, I actually move it out of the way. I'm like, okay, cool. And then I, I, I actually, when I leave, I actually pat him and then I point and I go back to my seat. Charles, it wasn't actually that. The whole time that that's happening, Charles is laughing. Huh. What happened was when, when I walked away, I did say to him, I told, I didn't told you now, don't fuck with me like that. Not again, like do not do that to me again. Don't talk to me like that again. And at that point, Charles felt like it had gone too far and he said, man, go home. It's the last time I've ever been in TMZ. Okay. So you got sent home that day and mm -hmm. you thought, okay, disagreement at work, not a huge deal. Mm -hmm. uh, but then I guess you had to meet with the attorneys. They called. Uh -huh. Yeah. They called you They called you yeah. to talk about the situation. Mm -hmm. At that point, did you think that things had escalated beyond what you thought it was. No, no, it wasn't the attorneys at first, it was HR. When they mentioned physical contact, I was surprised because I, it when they were like, yo, this is a like a physical thing, I was like, like, what do you mean? She was like, well, you grabbed him. I was like, I grabbed him. I was like, I put my hands on his shoulders. I would put my hands on Mike's shoulders all the time. Like, it's like, like it was, it was like a, I would go over to Mike, like if I was whispering some of the story, I put my hand on his shoulder, talk to him. I did, did, I was like, I had no fucking clue. And then I was like, oh shit, this is fucking real. Um, and uh, they were like, we're gonna take a couple of days and like, we're gonna decide whatever is that's going on and stuff. Okay. Well, were you able to get Michael to kind of step in on your behalf and say, hey, listen, it's cool. He didn't grab me. We're friends. This is being blown out of proportion. I want to speak up on on Van's behalf. Or he claims he did. I mean, I, I have no choice but to like believe him. But like, uh, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't not believe him. You know what I mean? Like yeah. me and him were talking throughout the whole thing. Ha. Like his girl reached out to me. Like Mike's. <laughs> Like, like it, everyone, like Mike was, Mike called me on the phone crying. He's like, I cannot believe that this, that this was like a weird thing that was going on. And it was being, it was just a, like a weird occurrence, like a weird happening. But me and him, I had a going away party, like after, after I was actually fired, right? Because what happened was this, a couple of days into that, they start, we're going to look at it. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. And then they, uh, they decide, okay, well, um, like, do you want to say anything or do you want to do anything or did you want to do this or do that? And I was like, nah, not really. And they were like, all right, well, uh, uh, we're going to have to go ahead and terminate you. And I was like, okay, cool. Like, literally, I was like, all right, cool. Hmm. Um, and then they, 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 they let me go. And my coworkers at TMZ threw me a going away party. Uh, cause like maybe like the next week it was quiet, but then, so they let me go maybe on like a Friday. Then that whole next week it was quiet. And then that weekend, my coworkers got together and threw me a going away party that they had that next Saturday. Was Michael Babcock there? Yes. Okay. Yeah. He was at the party. Yeah. Um, <laughs> like a lot of them were, what happened was they posted the pictures of the party on Instagram. They, they start going around. Mm -hmm. Monday, the page six story came out. And so either 
the page six story came from me relaying parts of the story to somebody that was at that party and then they talked to page six or TMZ wanted to announce that I was gone before I got a chance to say anything about it and then they leaked it to page six but then the page six story came out that I had a guy call me from page six that Monday or maybe that Sunday and it was that Monday morning and say that like they were doing a story on what happened. Yeah, because I mean, TMZ, remember there was the whole, there was a big piece that was about TMZ and some of the, you know, what they felt was some shady business practices and so forth of getting stories. Mm -hmm. um, was the New Yorker who put that out? I can't remember. I, it, it was, yeah, it was the New Yorker. I think yeah. it was New Yorker. Yeah, and I remember there was, there was a certain level of heat on TMZ, mm -hmm. which... I'm not sure exactly about the timing, but almost felt like, hey, listen, we're taking some heat over here, so let's just do some damage control and not potentially have this whole Van Lathan thing, you know, maybe tie into this or, or whatever. What no, that's not what it was. Yeah, it wouldn't have been, it wouldn't have been uh, a bigger deal over that. It just wouldn't. Have. Um, Mike wouldn't have made a big deal about it. I wouldn't have made a big deal about it. This was that was really about, and I, we all know it's not a big deal. Like I don't, I, there's no real beef between me and the office right now. Uh, the only, the only thing that I would be, so like when my dad passed away, my father passed away this year, like everybody from TMZ reached out, like, except for Harvey, hmm. like ev everyone hit me up like, Hey man, your dad passed away. Like I'm about, they knew everybody that I had worked there for a long time. They knew that my father was sick. They knew that, uh, <clears throat> he had had heart problems. I had to take time sometimes to deal with him and help him and do all that stuff. Uh, so my dad passed away. It was still love from everyone. When we won the Academy Award, everyone still reached out. The only person who hasn't reached out really throughout that, that entire time has been Harvey. But the real situation was that I was at the end of a contract. Uh, that happened in October. I think the contract was up in November. Hmm. I had already informed TMZ that I was not returning. Oh, really? Yeah. Aha. Okay. Yeah. And that, what was the reason why you were not coming back to TMZ? Had too much other shit. Okay. Like, like it, it, uh, it that summer, like my, like I had too many other opportunities. The Kanye thing had happened; it had changed my life. I had a lot, a lot of other things I could go do. I wanted to explore those things. I remember, you know, there was some talk about maybe doing some further stuff with Harvey and with TMZ. And it just, we could never get it to work right because it always was stuff that I would have to go do that stuff and then come and be in the office every day and be on the show every day. And I had had kind of enough of that. And so I had already said that I'm not re-signing the contract. And so with that situation, you want to save a little money, not pay me the last couple of months or whatever, whatever. You have an out, go ahead and get it done. Nobody was upset. They weren't upset. I wasn't upset that I had to leave. Gotcha. 